So instead of a first party Nintendo Direct, which I think would be a bit overkill right now, Nintendo decides to put out a mini Direct for third party games coming out. But before we begin, there are two games that I have to talk about. On June 17th, Square Enix announced that Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII is getting a remaster on Nintendo Switch alongside the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC in the form of Reunion. Though Remake would be a better definition for this Reunion title. What's more, there is no signs of this game being a cloud-based title, and I don't mean Cloud Strife. This game is focused on Zack Fair, a young soldier, second class, who works for the Shinra Electric Company. You can expect this PlayStation Portable game on Nintendo Switch this winter. I also have to talk about No Man's Sky, and good lord, this is the Switch version? For a moment, a part of me thought this is a cloud-based variation, though there is little to no way that this game is running natively on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, come on, my mind is blown. But not only is this game running natively on the Switch, but Bandai Namco of all companies will be providing the physical version. Luckily, you don't have to wait too long, as this game will be available on October 7th. And now, on to the main event. The games that caught my attention. First off, Square Enix decides to do a native port of Nier Automata for the Nintendo Switch under the end of Yorha Edition. This game will come bundled with a DLC and other goodies into one complete cartridge. This makes me wonder why the Kingdom Hearts games were not made to run natively on a Switch, when games like this can. Makes me hope for Final Fantasy VII Remake in the future. But for now, this game will release on October 6th. Second off, Bomberman's not going away as Super Bomberman R2 is coming out sometime in 2023. This looks to be a bigger title compared to the first Super Bomberman R game with a new multiplayer mode, Castle Mode. That being said, I wonder when there will be a Bomberman collection, which would most likely have the Saturn Bomberman, the N64 Bomberman games, and Wario Blast. And for those of you who were hoping for a Mega Man Battle Network collection, your wish has been granted. Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection has been confirmed for the Switch for 2023. From what I understand, the full version will be on the carts, while the digital version will be split into two volumes. That being said, some games won't be available, like the DS version of Battle Network 5 and network transmissions from the GameCube era. On the flip side of things, Pac-Man is back, or rather, Pac-Man World from the PlayStation 1 is coming to the Nintendo Switch in a re-pack remaster, due out August 26th. Unlike the original, it's about Pac-Man rescuing his inner family, which is unfortunate since there is a lack of Miss Pac-Man due to copyright problems. But that being said, there is enough content in this that it might as well be a full pack. I'll go get my jacket. Some new info has popped up with Mario and Rabbit's Spark of Hope, due out on October 20th. The gameplay looks more refined compared to the first title back in 2017. The story is darker compared to most Mario stories. And oh yeah, Bowser's joining in as well as a playable ally. Maybe in the future, we'll see a Mario Rayman crossover. Fingers crossed. Now as for Sonic Frontiers, it looks decent enough as an open world title similar to others like Zelda Breath of the Wild, Elder Scrolls Witcher 3, and Immortals Phoenix Rising. But the meat of the game are the cyberspace zones, which are nods to past 3D Sonic titles. Speaking of which, when is Sega going to port or remaster the older 3D Sonics alongside the Advanced Trilogy onto the Switch? I'm waiting! Now skipping ahead, let's talk about Dragon Quest Treasures, due out on December 9th. Explore the mysterious land of Draconia as two siblings, recruit monsters to your cause, and dig up treasure and riches beyond your wildest dreams. Considering that this theme is all about digging up gold and jewels, this would be a game that would be perfect for Nintendo's Wario. In fact, if any Mario character should get an open world game, it's Wario alright. Greed is good. And I need to talk about the Portal Companion Collection. This is a compilation of both Portal 1 and 2, set in the Aperture Science testing site. Portal 2 also comes with co-op with either local, split screen, or online multiplayer. You can check out this collection right now. 
Here's hoping for a physical version for collectors. At least that won't be a lie like the cake. And it seems Square Enix is on a roll here with a new game called Harvestella, due out on November 4th. This looks to be a farming sim similar to Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley. But at the same time, there are dangers lurking about with a season of death, Quietus. Can you provide food for your village while protecting them from the season of death? Hope your Switch is primed up. Finally, after so long, Atlas has confirmed Shin Megami Tensei Persona 5 Royal for Nintendo Switch. Due out on October 21st, players will take on the role of high school student Joker. The game combines social simulation with a dungeon crawling RPG. Lead the Phantom Thieves and change the hearts of criminals and other troubled individuals. Makes me wonder if Persona 5 Strikers is going to be hard to get when this game comes out, especially for physical fans. But that's not the only thing to come out of Persona. Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Portable has also been confirmed for the Switch due out next year. So if Persona 5 isn't enough to wet your whistle, consider Persona 3 and 4 to top that off. With all this good stuff coming from Atlas, I wonder if we'll see the Etrian Odyssey franchise come to the Switch as well. I think what really makes me smile is seeing older games come to the Switch, and I don't just mean PlayStation 4 and Xbox One titles, I'm talking about systems prior to those three. In a way, it means keeping the spirit of those titles alive. But hey, only time will tell what other older games will hit the Switch. Anyway, stay tuned for a future Switch Watch that talks about why nostalgia rules. Till then, I'm switching on out of here.